Okay, let's talk about exponential growth and decay. This is a phenomenon that occurs throughout science and engineering. It occurs whenever you have a quantity, we'll call it y, whose rate of change is proportional to how much is already there. So let's look at some examples. There's the amount of money that you have in the bank. It grows because the bank gives you interest, and the more money you have, the more interest you get. There's a population of bacteria with an unlimited food supply. You have twice as many bacteria, you have twice as many bacteria dividing, and the bacteria grow twice as fast. There's radioactivity. If you have a lump of radioactive material, the rate at which the atoms disintegrate is proportional to how many atoms you already have there. You get twice as much uranium, you'll get twice as many disintegrations. The amount of excess heat. If I've got a cup of coffee sitting on my desk, the rate at which it cools down is proportional to, its, to the difference between its temperature and room temperature. If I've got an ice cream cone, the rate at which it heats up is proportional to the difference between its temperature and room temperature. So the difference in temperature changes at a rate proportional to that difference in temperature. The number of sick people at the beginning of an epidemic. The more sick people there are, the more carriers there are, there are of the germs, and the more additional people will get sick. And we just worked an example involving the toxic waste in Lake Pristine. The rate at which the waste was being washed out of the lake was proportional to the concentration of, wa of waste in the lake, which was proportional to how much waste was in the lake to begin with. Now I've marked some of these with tick marks, the ones with, with minus signs, was exponential decay. The amount is decreasing with time. With the ones with a plus sign, it's exponential growth. They're increasing with time. But it's the same mathematical equation, and it's solved the exact same way. So let's look at that equation. The equation is that the rate of change is some proportionality constant, which we'll call k, times the amount that's there. And we'll call the quantity of interest y. Sometimes the, uh, it's called p for population or principle if you're dealing with economics. But in general, let's call it uh, y. So it's separable. We divide both sides by y and multiply by dt. And then we integrate both sides. Well, that tells us the natural log of y is kt plus a constant. But we don't want the natural log of y. We want y. So we exponentiate that. We get that the absolute value of y is e to the constant times e to the kt. So y is plus or minus e to the constant times e to the kt. And plus or minus e to a constant is just another constant. Let's give it a name. We'll call it a. And I claim that y equals a e to the kt is the solution, and it works no matter what a is. Let's check. What's the derivative of a e to the kt? The a comes along for the ride, and the derivative of e to the kt is e to the kt times the derivative of kt, which is k. So the derivative of y is y times k. It solves a differential equation. We win. So this is a solution, and if you plug in what happens at time 0, you get that y at time 0 is a times e to the 0, and that's a. So a is y of 0. So the amount that you have at time t is the amount that you started with times e to the kt. It's multiplicative. You always get an exponential growth or exponential decay whenever you have an equation like this. If k is positive, you get growth. e to the kt increases with time. If k is negative, it decreases with time. So how long does it take to get bigger? How long does it take to get twice as much as you had before? Let's suppose we're increasing, and when do you have twice as much as you started with? Well, we plug that in. We want twice what we started to be y of t, and y of t is y of 0 e to the kt. You cancel factors of y is 0, and you get 2 is e to the kt. So the natural log of 2 is kt. 
So t is the natural log of 2 divided by k. The natural log of 2 is about 0.69. And this gives rise to what's called the law of 70. If you have 10% growth per year, that really means that K is 0 0.10. 0 0.69 divided by 0 0.10 is 69 divided by 10. 70 is close enough for most purposes. So you, if you've got 10% growth per year, it takes 70 over 10, which is seven years to double. If you've got 5% growth per year, you double every 14 years. If you've got 3.5% growth per year, you double every 20 years. And in fact, if you plot the population of Austin since 1860, it's beautiful po uh, exponential growth. It's been roughly 3.5% growth every year for the last 150 years. And that means that the population has doubled every 20 years. Now, you don't just have exponential decay, sometimes you have a negative constant. So let's suppose that we, our constant is negative, we'll call it minus r. Well then, we have y of t is y of 0, e to the minus rt, because it's always e to the kt, but k is negative. And then, instead of talking about how long it takes to double, you can talk about how long it takes to get cut in half. If you decay by 3.5% per year, it'll take you 20 years to be cut in half. And we talk about the half-life, is how long it takes to be cut in half. And the whole behavior is exponential. After one half-life, you're cut in half. After two, you're cut in quarters. After three, you're cut in eighth. After four, you've got a sixteenth. After five, you've got a thirty-second. Every half-life, you lose half of what you had before. Exponential growth, exponential decay, it's all the same thing. It all comes from this one differential equation where the rate at which something is changing is proportional to how much is already there.